This morning, uh, we're going to continue our series uh, called Focused. Last week, we, we saw what God's main focus was. God's main focus was helping lost people be found. Right? He demonstrated that by sending his son, Jesus. And he said, I'm going to go and go all the way to the cross for your sake to help find people. And as a church, we want to be focused on finding lost people. It's our mission. It's what we're all about. On the way back from Dallas, we had an opportunity to go to a few airports. Uh, airports are, are usually a not so fun experience. I want to tell you, the Chicago airport and the Dallas airport did a good job. We waited less than five minutes in security both times. It was awesome. The only difficulty we had was on the buses from the parking lot to the to the airport or the airport back to our, our parking lot. Those those situations were a little little tough. But then we waited, I think one time thirty minutes for a bus. That was a little that was a little long. And then on Saturday evening, I have to confess uh, a weakness that I saw in myself, a shortcoming that I experienced again. There was on the bus where it's it was ten o'clock at night in Chicago. Uh, Got to wait for the bus, waited for the bus. The bus came, it was empty. There was one guy, the driver on there, and Rachel, I, Rachel, myself, uh, Ryan, and Shirley have gotten on the bus. And then shortly after the bus, there was two uh, Asian men that came on the bus. And they, they, they didn't quite know where they were going or what stop they needed to get off on. So they went up to the bus driver and they were asking the bus driver, you know, hey, what, what, what area uh, do I need to get off on? And he was rude. It was, it was a really bad situation. He started mouthing off to them and yelling at them and calling them names. And I sat there, and part of it was I was tired. Maybe that was part of my excuse. But I was also a little bit in shock. But in that moment, I was reminded by God my responsibility to do something. That, there's, there, there, that God has given us a voice, that God has given us a, a purpose in life, and, and, and our purpose is to do something. We're not just supposed to be people who, who, who love and get a little blessing club, right? And so I'm hoping that as we go through this sermon and through this series, that not only will we as a church gain God's focus, but I'm saying, man, God, I still need my vision adjusted. I still need my focus adjusted. Every year, uh, how many, you, you know, we have a few people in here that I can see your glasses, maybe a few of us for context, but, but every year I go to the eye doctor and I have to get my eyes rechecked, right? And you know how it goes, you sit on that, you, you sit on that chair and then uh, they, they, they got to read those little letters up there, you know, and try to figure them out. And then they're like, okay, and they take a little, get a little puff there, right? And then you, you do the thing, and then they have these lenses they bring before your eye, right? He goes, like, is it better one or two? Yep. Nope. Okay. Nope. Is it better three or four? <laughs> Y'all know. You guys know that before, right? I believe that God is wanting to do that same thing for us and adjust our focus. Maybe we've been used to seeing things one way. God wants to change our focus. This is what he's going to challenge us to do. This is what he's challenging me to do. He's showing us a vision. He's showing us what, what our church could look like in a place of multiplying and healthy and seeing people come to Christ. Seeing more missional communities, more small groups, more prayer meetings, more children's ministry, more of these things. And and he's showing us this vision, and, and what it's going to require us to do is, is we're going to be required to do something about it. This morning, let's turn to our Bibles to Matthew chapter 25. We're going to read verses 14 through 15, uh, and you can see it on, on the screen behind me. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 through 15. If you don't have a paper Bible with you, that your scripture in your phone is, is just as valuable as, as the words on a piece of paper. So you can find the Bible app this morning, 
Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 and 15, and it says this, Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted the, his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last. Skipping down a little bit, it says, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his... Let's pray this morning. Father, I am grateful for your word, and God, I just invite you this morning to adjust our focus. Father, help us to be focused on the things that you are focused on. Lord, not only helping lost people be found, but Father, I pray that today as we focus in on this word from Matthew 25, God, that we would be encouraged to do something. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Anybody uh, here enjoy playing with Legos? That was my favorite thing to do as a kid. Outside of soccer, finding lizards, Legos. It was number number two or three on the list. Denver has adopted this, and I'm pretty, pretty happy about it. And so the grandma and grandpa, they're down in Florida right now, you guys may know that. And, and they're, they went and visited the manatees. It's a, it's a big thing to go and have, they have manatee fairs and things like that. And they go and they watch the manatees go down the river. If you don't know what a manatee is, it looks like a big walrus. This is big, like some, some of them call it a sea cow. But uh, it, it, it's a big animal, it was close to the river. And so they had sent Denver, they went to the manatee fair, and they sent Denver this Lego set for the manatees. But it was different than any other Lego set I, I had even come together. You know, if you have done Legos before, you, you get the box and you see the nice pretty picture, right? And then they, they open up the instructions and, it, and you start from ground zero. And it's usually, you know, one block here, and you have to build it, you to steadily build it and going up. And, and, until you get the whole set. My favorite set when I was a kid it was a police set. It was really awesome. It was like 1,200 something pieces. It was like a big deal. I was super excited about getting it. But this manatee set was really interesting to me. I when we saw the picture. We knew what it was going to look like. But the the way that it was building, it was building it upside down. Like so, we were building it like from the inside out. It was it was it was going. We started with the middle layer. Then it kind of went up, and then it formed the bottom, and then we formed the arms, and then it, at the very end, it wasn't until like the last moment where finally all these pieces that we had built, boom, we came together, and we, we had the manatees. I should bring it. But they were like extra small. They were like miniature mini uh, Legos. I think this is the same way that God sees our life. <coughs> Oftentimes, he shares with us a destination, a goal, purpose, and he asks us to keep on taking steps of faith as he guides us by his spirit. I remember talking to Denver. Denver was like, man, I don't know how many times. He goes, Dad, this doesn't look like the picture. I'm like, I, I know something. We're just going to keep on building these little things. But then all of a sudden, masterfully, just as God sees our lives in Forward, he masterfully leads us to his purposes, to the vision that he has for us. God has a vision for each one of you. He has a vision for us as a church. He has a purpose for us to accomplish. And he's asking us to keep on taking those steps of faith, putting that one block at a time, one little thing at a time, one following of his instruction at a time, until he accomplishes what he desires for your life for my life, and for this church. Man, today, if you don't remember anything else, know this, that God has a purpose he wants to accomplish through you. God has a purpose that he wants to accomplish through you. And he's waiting for you and for me to gain the right focus, to gain the right perspective, to make the right adjustment, and do something that he's asking us to do. Anybody else want to do God's asking us to do. I said, all right, God, you, 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 you've asked, you, you, you put a step in front of us that none of us were expecting this year as a church, as, a, as, a, as an individual. And it's going it's to require some things of me, but you know what? Just as God has put that first step in front of us, man, we've got to continue to be obedient. Say, all right, God, I'm willing to take that next step. I don't really know how this step is going to lead us to this bigger step, but God, I trust you. You're the one that is saying these things. God, you're the one that's showing these things. 
You're the one that is leading us. I trust you. God has a purpose for you to accomplish. As a church, our leadership, we have said yes to God's direction. We are becoming one church, two locations, focused church, West Madison, with the sole purpose of helping more people find Jesus. Anybody excited about that? I mean, this, you got a little quiet. I went, I went to a conference. Yeah, they are going to be excited about it. Come on, we're going to see more people come to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Woo. Amen. You know, they had a crew. I, I won't make you guys stand up and jump around. They had this crew that every time a pastor made a point, they would like stand up and go, Glory! In the middle of the conference. It was one of those kind of like really pumped up. If you, if you decided, I, know, I won't make you guys do anything that you are comfortable with, but we're going to see more people come to Jesus. That's God's purpose in all of this. That's God's vision in all of this. It's to see Madison transformed with the good news of Jesus. And you know what? I'm excited to be in the middle of that. I'm excited to do something new. I'm excited to go after something that I haven't seen before. I'm excited to go forward and say, God, yeah, whatever it is, I'm willing to obey. God has a purpose for each one of your lives. And our response to him is to say, yes, Lord, whatever it is I'm willing, I'm going to go after it. So what's our little hands in this moment? So what do we need to do? We need to ask God, God, what specific ways have you created me? Have you gifted me to do something for you. Each one of us are created, gifted, given passions, and, and God has instilled us and created us and did us together in such a way that we will bring fame to His name. We have a purpose to accomplish that His name is lifted high. Yes. You're valuable to God. God saw you and he said, no, and you are somebody that I can put my purposes in. You are somebody that I can put my glory in. You are somebody that I can use. You are somebody that I want on my side. You guys know that? I'm praying that God convinces you this morning that he has a purpose, that he knows your weaknesses and he knows your strengths and says, I want you. I want you in my plan to help others come to Jesus. Man, we've got to focus on what we have, rather than worrying about what we don't have. And oftentimes I get stuck in that, that mode. Man, I, I'm not that person. I, I don't have that gift. No, I, I don't have that ability. Man, this week I, had, I saw a whole bunch of people on stage. There were all these dominating, <laughs> dominating like eight personalities, really strong. I said, I'm not that. I, I'm not like that guy. God doesn't... doesn't God, when he saw your purpose and when he called you and when he said, I want you in the game, he wasn't thinking about the other person that has more or has different. That's the one thing. Sometimes we say that. I even said it just now. They have more. No, they don't have more. They just have different. God has designed you in such a way with a purpose to do something for his glory. Stop worrying about what you don't have. Think about what you do. We can see this over and over in scriptures, right? Moses was standing before God, Moses, and God told Moses, hey, go to the Pharaoh and speak. And what did Moses say? Hey, but I can't talk really. I can't, I can't do this. I can't talk to the Pharaoh. He said, what do you have in your hand? You have a staff. He said, go, and I'll be with you. I love the story of the, of the little boy, right? When the, the 5,000 crowd, the, the huge crowd of people that needed to get fed, right? And a little boy with a lunch. Three fishes, two loaves. He wasn't worried what he didn't have. He said, hey, this is what I got. And what he had put in the hands of God. You want to do something? Do you guys want to do something for God? It's not about what we don't have. It's what about what we have. We place what we do have in the hands of God. And then something greater than what we could ever accomplish happens. Amen. Because God is a God that does the supernatural. He does above and beyond anything we can hope or imagine. So it's not about what you do have right now, what you possess in yourself. It's what we have put into the hands of God. That when we begin to do something and we begin to take those steps of faith, that then his purposes are accomplished. And it looks way greater than anything I could accomplish on my own. St. Corinthians. Paul is saying, Started with this. My grace, his grace is sufficient for me. 
It covers me. In my weaknesses, I am strong. Not because of what I am in myself, but because of who he is. And when I place who I am in his hands, then all of a sudden I get God-sized things happening and not just ordinary Andrew weaknesses happen. Focus on what we do have rather than what we don't have. Comparison is the worst thing ever. I've never compared myself with somebody else and felt good. Maybe some of you have, it's all right. <laughs> the prideful, we'll, we'll sacrifice that. Oftentimes all it does is it creates a gap between me and, and that other person. God is here not to cover a gap between me and another individual. God wants to fill the gap between you and what he's called you to be. God's grace is sufficient for us to accomplish exactly what God's purpose is, not what we desire to see ourselves like somebody else. Because God has already given you the resources that you need to accomplish his purpose. Do <coughs> you believe that this morning? Yes, sir. God has already given you exactly what you need to accomplish the purpose that he has for your life. Three servants in the story here, they were each given the resources necessary to accomplish the purchase. One of them was given five bags of silver, one of them uh, two bags of silver, and the other one one bag of silver, right? They, they had just what they needed to do something with what was given to them. Some of you guys are sitting here with resources, with gifts, with talents, already in your possession. God is asking you to do something with, with your abilities, not somebody else's abilities, not according to somebody else's abilities. He's ready to use you in your ability. He's ready for you to do something. Amen. As we become focused church, we need to look at what you do have and be willing to use it for God's kingdom. Praise God. Because we're going to get ready to look at it in a moment, maybe some a little stepping on some, some toes here in a minute, the one individual that has something in there. As we're becoming focused church, one of the things that uh, I remember doing as an intern, when you go to an internship, anybody that had an internship before? And you go to the internship, and you want to be careful what you tell people you know how to do. <laughs> no, Pastor, I've never painted anything before in my life. Nope. I've never, I've never ministered. This is ministry, my, my ministry experience. Internship. No, I've never shingled a roof. I've never done that, Pastor. I don't know what. You, I don't know how to do it. I've never cut the grass. I've never. <laughs> I've never edged the parking lot. I've never done powerpoints. I never. I don't know. I don't went to Bible college. That's all I did. Because I knew what you guys know this, right? You, somebody who knows what your talent is. Somebody who knows what your gift is. And what what is that? Hey. Make sure that you're really friendly. You're, you're a good host at, at, at Pig Sing. I said, hey, Tron, can, can you greet at the door? Because I, I just I love how, how great, grateful you are and how, how good you are with people. And, oh, Zach, you, you know some technology? Okay, that's good. I, I like to know that information because, um, Zach, you can, you can help out Austin because Austin's going to be in Minneapolis next week. And so, uh, Zach's a Oftentimes, our tendency is to protect ourselves out of fear of being taken advantage of. God is inviting us into a walk of faith, a walk of trust. That God is giving you these gifts. It's not just to, so you can pour them for yourself, it's not just so you can, you can sit on them, but He's actually inviting us into, the, into taking risks on His behalf and, and for His purposes. And so, uh, as I was meeting with Brian, Brian's been asking me. He's like, hey, Andrew, what do you know how to do? What do you like doing? What, what are you passionate about? What, what abilities do you have? What experiences do you have? Why? Because, because as we come together, it's going to require us to, to lean into each other's strengths so that God's purposes can be established. We, we've got to be willing as a church to say, yeah, I, I'm willing to do something. 
you, God. Uh, it, it may look different than what I used to. Maybe, maybe I'm used to just strolling into church at 10 o'clock. And you know what? I, I, I'm willing to come at 10:30 because I know I have some administrative giftings that the pastor needs at 9:30 instead of at 10 o'clock that would really help benefit the church and help move us forward. And, you know, God, I, I'm willing to do something different for Your purposes and for Your glory. As we become one, we've got to be willing to do something. Be determined to take steps that require faith. I'm encouraged by Be determined to take steps that require faith. That's how we're going to accomplish the purposes of God, is we're going to be determined, I'm going to take steps that are going to require faith. The greater the risk that we are willing to take, I believe, is the greater reward that we will receive from God. Amen. We've got to be willing. Again, our tendency is to, to protect ourselves. But this is what happened with the one man who, who had one bag of silver. He went and he, out of fear, he went and buried it. He said, I don't want to lose it. I, I don't want to be used. I, I don't want to be taken advantage of. What, what ifs? All the what ifs came into play. And what he was given In putting ourselves out there and offering our purposes and offering our gifts and offering who we are and offering our talents to God, we are doing just as Jesus did. He put himself out there knowing that he would be taken advantage of. Yes. yes. Jesus went all the way to the cross knowing yes. that some people are going to receive it and some people are going to reject it. And he said, you know what? It's still worth it to accomplish the purpose of God. It's still worth it to go all the way to the place of humiliation, all the way to the place of being completely used. It's worth it Amen. for you. Amen. It's worth it for me. It's worth it. It's worth it to accomplish God's purposes. Matthew 25, 21 gave five bags of silver, and that person doubled it. And what was his response to the person who doubled? He said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and little, and I will set you over much. 25, 21. Matthew 25, 21. Well done. You have been faithful with what you have been given, and I'm going to set you over much. Amen. And this morning, God is waiting. God has something bigger for you than just coming here on a Sunday morning. God has something bigger for you than just, just, just visiting a, a small group on a Wednesday night. God has something bigger than you and what you're currently doing. And he's waiting for you to say, yes, God, I'm going to take those steps of faith. I'm going to use the gifts and the talents that you've been doing and give it to me. I'm going to do something for your name's sake. And he said, when you, when you get to that point, when you're faithful with what you do have, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you more. I'm praying that when God looks at a church, when he looks at our hearts, when he looks at us, that he would find people who are, are faithful with, with what we have been given so that he can do more. Is there more that God wants to do in the city of Madison? I believe so. Is there more that God wants to do in my family? I believe so. Is there more that God wants to do in my life? I believe so. And God is saying, do something with what I have given you. I believe in more. There's no greater reward than doing something risky for God. Yeah. No greater reward. Doing something risky for God. Yeah. Stop asking. Stop asking what it will cost me. And start being willing to lose it all to accomplish God's purposes. And that's our ultimate goal. Do something that will advance God's purpose. Do the plan. Take the action. Take the steps. We know this, right? It's easier to, to, to steer a moving car than one that is parked, right? One that is stopped. One, you know, an object that is stopped in fact, it takes more inertia, it takes more power, it takes, it takes more force to move an object that is sat and doing nothing than one that is trying to figure it out. I'm telling you, I don't have it all figured out. 
kind of see what it looks like down the road, the purpose God is calling us to. I, I kind of see, you know, where he's where he's leading us and what he's leading us to. But like all the different, all the A, a to Z steps that it's going to take us from from where we are to, to where God, to the purpose that God has for us, I'm not sure. But you know what? I'm willing to start taking some steps. When Ryan said, "Hey, let's do this together," I said, "Okay, let's 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 figure this out." Okay, let's pray. All right, let's fast. Okay, let's let's talk to our board. Okay, let's talk to some church members. Okay, let's let's take a vote. Okay, let's meet with a lawyer. All right, let's see what this takes. Let's maybe okay, we'll change up the service a little bit. We'll have worship at the end. Okay, well, but we're gonna start moving in this direction and say, okay, God, I'm willing. God, I'm taking some. God, I'm willing to move. God, I'm willing to, to use myself. I'm willing to change. I, I'm willing, God, and, and as I'm moving towards. This purpose that God has for me, I, I gotta trust God. You're gonna start guiding me, and when I need to turn right, you're gonna tell me, okay. And I want to start going this way. And when I'm going, oh, all right, I need to go back a little bit this way. All right, okay, I'll, I'll follow you, right? Start taking some steps. Start making some plans. Start heading towards this direction. I read this really good book. Since I had three hours on the plane down to Dallas and three hours on the plane back, I, I said uh, I'll bring a book with me. And so uh, I read a book by God, by Bob Goff. It's called Love Does. I really want to encourage you, even if you're not a reader, it's like it's a story. He talks in a story the whole time. And it's just like story after story. And it just brings some, a little nugget of who God is in each one of them. One of the things that he told the story of when he was uh, a little younger. There's this big sailing competition. People would sail from California, from San Francisco, and they would sail to Hawaii. And, and, and Bob has never sailed before. He never owned a sailboat. He didn't know what to do. But they, they had a friend who had a sailboat, and they're like, all right, let's do this. So with five days' notice, they registered to go on this sailing trip with uh, all these people. And there was, a, there was a gentleman that they had from the U.S. He was a U.S. Navy guy, so he knew how to navigate the seas and so they're ready hey, we're going to go and we got we got like our, our golden ticket right our, our navy seal guy who who knows what he's doing out on the seas well the day before they were going to uh, set off for the sailing ex, uh, excursion the the navy guy said sorry guys I, I have something come up i can't go with you so what did bob decide to do bob's the kind of guy i'm learning through this book he's going to go anyway and so they went. They went to the local uh, boating uh, boating store, and they said, "All right, uh, we we don't have a GPS. We don't have a satellite uh, guided uh, system. And then what do we need to be able to sail from here to Hawaii?" And, they, and the person at the sail uh, sail company, he said, "All right, you need this this instrument called a sextant, and you need to do all these calculations. And if you get give them a crash course on all the ways that you have to calculate by taking the little thing, and measuring where the sun is, and measuring where the horizon." And, and doing this, all this thing that, and he was telling them all the, all these instructions and all these the things and all these different ways in which you can find your way to Hawaii when you're sailing across the ocean. And Bob looked at him probably three quarters of the way through his explanation, said, "I can't do that. You got like, you got like the like the simple version, like <laughs> the two-step program how to get from here to Hawaii." And the guy at the story said, well, if you really want to know, he said, if you take the sextant out and you can, you can measure five minutes till noon, at noon, and five minutes after noon, you can, with about a 60 degree, or 60, sorry, that's a 60 mile kind of radius, know generally where you are. My personality, I don't know. But Bob, Bob said, "All right, that's all I need." So, so they did. They took out the they took out the sextant every at, at noon, five minutes to noon, at noon, and five minutes later they kind of passed the thing. They said, "Is it?" And he told them, "He said, as you as you course this um, on the map, you know, you just draw the sixty miles. That's and you, you generally just kind of can go straight on the path, and then you'll be within sixty miles of where you think you are." Did Bob make it to Hawaii? <laughs> I don't know if I would have made it to Hawaii. But Bob and his crew, they made it to Hawaii. <laughs> they said, all right, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, da, da, da. all right, then we're, we're going. We have God's word. We have God's spirit. And we have his purpose to help people Jesus. Now I know a lot of us, I've, I've done, I've spent hours of prayer to 
to and fast. God, what is your will for my life? God, am I supposed to do this? Am I supposed to? God, would you send rain at this moment, at this time? God, would you tell somebody to come and speak to me and say these exact words so I know exactly what you want me to do because I don't want to make a mistake. And really, the option between A, B, and C that I was choosing from would all lead to God's purposes being accomplished in my life. Sometimes we're waiting for this beautiful sign, this, this, this extravagant plan, this perfect calculation of the exact steps that we're going to take. And God says, hey, do all these things for my purposes. Accomplish my purpose. What is, we talk about this what is God's main focus? He wants to help lost people be found. Yes. So whatever I do to offer myself, offer my gifts, offer my talents, Take some steps and trust His Holy Spirit is going to correct me and lead me when I get a little off sometimes. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And I have a body of believers around me who's going to correct me sometimes and say, all right, Pastor, let's get back on this path. Let's make sure that we're focused on helping people find God. And I believe that as we begin to do something, God is going to guide us yes. to His purpose. Your action. <coughs> Your steps of faith engages God's willingness to step in and to do the supernatural. When we take what we do have and offer it to God, God is able to do something. When we do something, God does something. And it's way beyond anything we could hope or imagine. Amen. Matthew 25, 29 and the story ends this way. It says this, To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what they have will be taken away. Guys, don't sit. Don't bury the gifts and the passions that God has given you. God has given you these gifts and these talents so that you will do something great for His purposes, for His plan, for His kingdom, for His ways. This morning, I want to take a moment and pray. God, would you help us to be a people who do something, get in the game, who use what we've been given, who offer our resources, offers all of who we are to God. Let's pray this morning. Father, I am grateful for who you are. God, that you have given each one of us gifts and talents and, and passions. Father, not for our own sake, but God, for your sake and for the purposes that you have planned for us. Father, I pray now that you would help adjust our vision. Adjust our vision so that we can see that there is something that you're calling us to do. It would help us to be willing to do something. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 This morning, we want to give an opportunity for you to react, for you to respond to God's word. As the worship team comes up, we're going to spend some time in worship this morning. And I want to encourage you during our worship time uh, that if you uh, want to stay in your seat and stand and worship the Lord, I encourage you to do so. We're also going to have some uh, people up here. I invite you to to join me. And we're going to be praying up here. If you have a prayer, if you have something on your heart, you want to, you want to pray that God will come through. I want to agree with you in prayer. If you're here this morning, you say, yeah, God, uh, yeah, Andrew, yeah, God, I have some some, some purposes. I have some passion. I have some gifts. And I want to do something about it. You want somebody to pray with you this morning? That you would be somebody that does something. That you would be somebody that walks and begins to take steps of faith. I, I want to encourage you to come. We, we would love to pray with you. But this morning, it would, be, it would be terrible if we went any further without offering an opportunity for you to respond to Jesus. The amazing thing about the good news of Jesus is that Jesus was one that did something. He wasn't content with just looking from heaven at a world that was broken by sin, but he made a decision to do something, to get off the throne and to come 
to die on the cross for you and for me so that all of our sins and all of our wrongdoing, all of our shortcomings would be washed away and that we would have an opportunity to live a life of purpose, to live a life with hope, to live a life of peace with God. And so this morning, we're going to all pray together. And we're going to pray that our sins would be forgiven. And we're going to make a commitment to follow Jesus all the days of our lives. And if you're here this morning and you're praying this prayer for the first time, I want to encourage you to tell somebody in the room before you leave, let me know. I would love to know that you've made a decision today to make Jesus your Lord, to make Jesus the boss in your life, to make Jesus the Lord and the leader of everything that you do. So together, church, let's do this because we all, and, and here, we, we all pray together. We do these things together. So let's pray together. Father God, Father God forgive me for all of my wrongdoings. Forgive me for my shortcomings. Jesus, I ask that you would become the Lord of my life. That you would become the leader of every one of my decisions. And give me strength to follow you every day of my life. I pray these things in Jesus' name. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.